Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and today I'm just doing um, a very easy meal, but if you want to stock your freezer, but you don't want to spend a whole day, you know, prepping and making all different kinds of meals, just make one and make an extra. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a, um, a ham and broccoli macaroni and cheese bake. Plus, I'm going to make an extra one for the freezer. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. It's easy and it is delicious. So I got my ham. I got my water on the stove for my elbow macaroni. You can use any pasta you want. I'm just using elbow macaroni. I've got my ham chopped up. This was frozen. I'm put that. I'm gonna put that ham right in my bowl over here, right here. I might wind up having to get my big daddy bowl because you know me. I gotta have lots of room to mix. Um, I've got broccoli over here, and this is the steam broccoli. So. With it being a steam broccoli, I'm going to have to probably cut it up some. My husband doesn't want huge pieces. He's not a fan of broccoli, but as long as I cut it up small, he has no problem with it. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to cut this up real small. And then he'll... He'll eat it and it'll be fine. So I'm just going to cut this up before we get going on anything else. And uh, let my, well it won't boil if I don't turn the burner on. <laughs> That's funny. I'll cut this up and when I get all this cut up, I'm going to go get my big 30-quart bowl, too, because that's nice for mixing. And then we'll get back here, and I'll show you how the sauce all goes together. And we can get this going. This is great. I took these out of the freezer so that they would thaw just a little bit. So it'll be easy to cut. Turn it up good. I might wind up giving my daughter one of these as well. So maybe I'll be able to get three pans instead of two. We'll see just how it turns out. So I'll be right back. Okay, friends, my water. <clears throat> is boiling over there. So, I'm going to salt this water because remember, this is about the only time that you can season noodles is when they're cooking. So we're going to put that salt in there. You want to wait till it's boiling to salt because if you salt it when you first put it in there, there's two reasons you shouldn't do that. One is simply because salt water takes longer to heat up and two, that will pit your pan. So we're going to put two, four, about five cups in there. And we all know that two cups is a pound. I'm doing, you know, probably two and a half pounds in there. I always do a little bit of extra macaroni. That's all right. We can do that. So I turned this down. We're gonna let this cook al dente. We don't want this to get all the way done. So once I turn the camera off, I'll set a timer so I don't forget it. Okay, friends, so while that is, uh, those noodles are cooking, we're gonna start our sauce. I got my little cast iron Dutch oven. I'm going to put a stick of butter in here, okay? And when you do this, <clears throat> you always have equal parts of butter and flour. Equal 
equal parts of butter and flour. So we're going to need to put eight tablespoons of flour, which is a half cup. Now we put a half a cup. So when that gets melted, we'll add that to it. This is going to be delicious. Um, I decided I maybe, I doubt it though, but maybe I'll have enough for a little extra in a smaller pan to put in the freezer as well. But I think I'm going to give my daughter one of these. Just to surprise her. She didn't ask for it. But this is a good way to, to stock your freezer, friends. When you're doing casseroles like that, it, it's no, it's not any harder to make to double it and use one for now and one for the freezer, and that's a good way to get your freezer meals built up. Especially if you're busy and you know you work a lot, you don't want to spend your whole weekend cooking meals for the following week, unless of course you're like me and you love cooking. I love cooking. I cook all the time. And my kids love it that I love cooking. So that's pretty good. So we're going to, I'm going to bring in so you can see just what I'm doing. All right, in goes our flour. <clears throat> and I'm going to get that mixed up. We're going to cook this up for about two to three minutes to cook that flour out of there but I also want it to get a little bit darker so you have more depth in your flavor see that beautiful I think you can see that we'll fix this so you can There we go. See how that's doing? Beautiful. Just keep stirring it up. While that is cooking up, we're going to get our milk and our heavy cream ready. I'm going to do two cups of milk and then four cups of heavy cream. Might need a little more. No, I'm going to need more. I'm going to need two extra cups. I'm sorry. I'm doing a half cup. Eight tablespoons. See how nice that does? And we want that to keep cooking. And once we get our milk in there and our heavy cream in there, then we can start adding our spices to this. Okay, see how beautiful and brown that butter's starting to get? Perfect. We're going to put our milk in there. Alexa, stop the timer. Okay. Now we're going to do... our heavy cream. And I'm going to do another... All right, now we got that. Look at how beautiful that's looking. We're gonna start adding our spices. And of course, I'm gonna do a lot of pepper because my family loves it. You season this according to your taste. I am gonna add a tablespoon of ground mustard because this is like doubling it, you know. So there's that going in. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm 
I'm also going to do some parsley in there. And I'm also going to do about a good teaspoon of garlic powder. And that looks like that's about it for right now. So we better turn this back up because we want to bring this to a boil again. Get good and hot so that it'll melt our cheese. Okay, see how nice that is? We're going to put our cheese in there. Get that mixed up really good. That's about mm, six cups of cheese, six to seven cups of cheese. We're going to turn that off because we don't need that heat on. And we're going to get this mixed up. We got enough residual heat in this cast iron pan to melt all this. Beautiful, look at that. Absolutely. Cheesy. Beautiful, cheesy. Look at that. All right. That's good. All right, let's assemble this casserole. Okay, so we have got our ham and our uh, broccoli in there. Let's see, I want to get a nice big spatula to mix. We're going to throw in our elbow macaroni. So many of you ask me about this big bowl. Oh, that thing's delightful. I got a link in my description box under my video for the an Amazon link to this. Now, I didn't buy this one at Amazon. I got this from my local Amish store, but they have the same ones on Amazon. All right, so now let me take this out of here. We are going to dump all this right in here. Oh, that's beautiful. We don't want to waste none of that. My cast iron pans are heavy. I'll tell you that much. Oh. So let's get this all mixed up. Isn't that beautiful? I love a big I love a big bowl that I can mix in. Because everything gets mixed up so good when you have a big bowl. Okay, now we're gonna start filling up. I got two deep dish pans here. I love those deep dish pans. Start fillings. Look at that beautiful. Now you can top these. You can top these with some toasted breadcrumbs, potato chips, anything, crackers, you know. I'm not topping mine. I'm just going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Here we go. On top of mine, and that's going to be it. So we're going to put this other big bunch over here, my daughter's, because we don't need that much for us. Look at how beautiful that is. So that, that's how easy it is to do. Let me get this. You've got one for now and one for later. Don't bake these before you freeze them, okay? Otherwise, 
it tends to get a little grainy tasting. So I'm to heat it up is one thing, but um, I don't I don't bake these first. I just simply put them in the freezer. Now the one I'm gonna bake. Let me find my. I'm going to turn my oven on right now to 350. And then mine is going to bake for about a half an hour. So it's nice and bubbly and, you know, heat it all the way through because those noodles will finish cooking in the oven. This one, we're going to wrap up for the freezer. My glasses and we're gonna write on this and flatten it down a little bit ham and broccoli mac and cheese bake and then she's gonna bake this at 350 until heated through. And enjoy. I say until it's heated through, bubbly and heated through because everybody's oven's different. Normally it's about a half hour or so. You know, oh, I wanna put, I wanna cover that one up today. So we're just gonna cover this one. And then when it's almost done baking, I'm going to open it up and add a little Parmesan cheese on the top of it. So I got some fresh grated Parmesan cheese that we're going to put on that. Okay? We're going to get this wrapped up. I love this plastic. It makes life so much easier for me. No. Oh, get off there. Okay. And that's it. Wrap that up nice and tight. And it's ready for the freezer. And all she got to do is take the plastic wrap off, leave the foil on, and bake it. So there you have it. That's a hefty duty. That's a hefty pan. But she's got six in her family. So that's one meal. There won't be any leftovers of that. So I'm going to go and clean up my mess. And when I get this baked off, I will bring it back. Because that's what we're going to have for dinner. And we'll let you see how wonderful that turns out. And then hopefully, you'll make it for your freezer too. Okay, friends. You can see that. That is just gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is I got some fresh grated Parmesan here. I'm not going to put a whole lot on there, but I just put a little bit of this on instead of uh, the breadcrumbs. I, I'm not, we're not fond of the crackers and the crumbs on here or potato chips or, I mean, I guess if you fried your breadcrumbs, you know, in a little bit of butter and made them nice and crispy and crunchy, that might be okay, but I just like to put a little Parmesan on here. Probably not quite a cup. There. Now I'm going to put that back in for about another 10 minutes till that's nice and melted. And then we'll be back and we'll scoop this up for dinner. Can you see how beautiful that turned out, friends? Absolutely gorgeous. I got to have a little coffee <laughs> with my dinner. 
So, I'm going to make that way. That cools down a little bit. And fill this out. I love this little, it's not a Keurig. I don't even know what it is. Toastmaster. It's from Dollar General. But I like that. It works nice. And while well, I got this bowl, I'll have coffee in that bowl. I to get my creamer. Okay, so that is done. The other one is in the freezer. And you know that I can't just do one thing. I got to do a couple other things. Well, it's the perfect opportunity for me to show you an easy, no-need bread. And what that means is we're going to put the dough together. We're not going to knead it. Just cover it. And we're going to let it basically ferment for about 12 to 18 hours. So, you know, it's 5 o'clock right now, dinner time. <laughs> so, 5... Um, It'll be about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be able to turn the camera back on and finish it up so you will get it in one video. So I think that's what we're going to do. And then you guys can, can try making that. It's so easy. I had a comment, oh gosh, just the other day. Um, a gal asked if it would be safe if she put her dough together and left it in the fridge till she come home for work. Well, that's the perfect time to just whip up some no-knead bread dough and cover it, put it in a warm spot and let it ferment, let let mother nature do the let mother nature and and father time do your work for you. How amazing it turns out. I love the stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and as soon as we have our dinner, I'll be back in the kitchen and I'll show you how to put together a very very simple and basic no need bread and then we'll we'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish it up and probably do something else on top of it so that you have a nice video from me all right we're gonna um this is was bubbling i think it's done bubbling now but we're gonna serve this up and i think i'm gonna use this i'm gonna use this spoon goodness that just looks gorgeous now we're not this is all we're having you know I tell you a lot of times we have look at that man a lot of times I'd, I'd make salads we have salads all the time with our dinners but not tonight friends I'm tired tonight we're just gonna have this and then I'm gonna come back in and we're gonna put together some nice um, take a look that is gorgeous and it makes a nice freezer meal and let me tell you in case I didn't tell you you don't want to bake it before you freeze it if you're gonna freeze this you freeze it unbaked um and then I forgot what I was gonna say that's the way it works well it's gone <laughs> so we're gonna go have our dinner and I'll be back when I come back. Then we're going to do the no need bread. And you're going to love that bread. Alrighty, friends. I'm going to show you how easy it is to put this bread together. You could put this bread together before you even go to work, cover it and throw it on your counter. That's how fast it is to put this bread together. Hold on. And uh, when you come home, you can bake your bread. So anyway, let's get started. This is so easy. Um, All right, so we're not going to proof any yeast. This is, this is, uh, you don't have to proof the yeast. This, I'm using instant yeast. I need this. 
we're going to do three and a quarter cups of flour. And you can use regular all-purpose flour, okay? And then just, just a quarter cup. There you go. All right, that can go in the sink. And to this, we're going to add a half teaspoon of yeast. One half teaspoon. This is the bread that gives you the big airy holes in it. The big holes in the bread when you cut it up. It's not real dense bread, but it's, it is wonderful. Okay, let me put this lid on here. And then we're going to do two teaspoons of salt. All right, and to all this, let me move this stuff. We're going to add one and a half cup of warm water. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can stir it with the back of a wooden spoon, the handle of a wooden spoon, or you can use your little dough whisk. Doesn't matter. It's going to be a wet, shaggy dough. And that's all right. That's what you want. See that? There's not a whole lot of mixing to it. See how that does? Already mixed up. All right. See how shaggy that is? I'm trying to get that off there without making a big mess. There we go. I got it. It was flying everywhere. Okay, so we got that. Let me wash my pan. Friends, that's all there is to putting this bread together. That took us, what, four minutes, if that? You're going to leave it just that way. This is a no-need bread. Time is going to be your friend in this one. And time is going to do your work. So we're just going to leave this covered up in a warm spot in your kitchen or your pantry it doesn't matter for 12 to 18 hours i've been known to let mine go up to 24 hours and it was absolutely fine i mean the longer it it sits the more it ferments so you'll get a oh it's just divine wait till you taste it wait till tomorrow when we put this bread together and get it baked up and try it out. You're going to love it. So, I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Welcome to another beautiful day. It's been 18 hours, with or 19 hours, with our bread. It has just sat on the corner of my kitchen for 19 hours. I got my oven heated to 450. You want to do that. And I'm putting my Dutch oven in my oven because you want that screaming hot. Right. You know what I do because I'm so short? <laughs> These work wonderful. I like that. Perfect. Okay. So I gotta have those out here. Um, this is gonna be wonderful. If you don't have a Dutch oven, no big deal. You can take and put this in bread pan. Put it in a bread pan and put another bread pan over the top of it to create like a makeshift Dutch oven. If you got those little clips, you could clip it to secure it but this doesn't rise a whole lot, so I don't know if you would even have to do that. But you know what? Put two bread pans together and even set a pan on top of it. You know, that, that can go in the oven for weighted it down. 
weighting it down and you're going to get the same effect. So, all right. <clears throat> We're going to put, look at how jiggly this is. I don't know if you can see this. I want you to see that. The bubbles, see how bubbly and jiggly that is and sticky it is? That's what you want. This is a little hard to work with, but we're going to do it. We're going to put a little bit of flour on our table. Okay. We're going to dump this out right onto our table here. I'm trying to show you that. That isn't going to work. So, I'm just going to get this all out. All right, there we go. We got it. Okay. We're going to keep this. We're not getting rid of that right yet. But we can get rid of that. Okay. I'm going to put one this way and one that way on that bowl. Because that's going to sit in that bowl until it goes into the Dutch oven. Okay, now just take your bench scraper and kind of fold this over on itself. Okay. You don't have to knead it. You're just folding it over onto itself. And we want to get a nice, see that dough that's beautiful. We want to get a nice round dough. Okay, that's it. There's no kneading and no messing around with it. It's just sticky. So, we're going to put that right in our bowl. And it's going to sit right in there until the Dutch oven is hot, until that oven is preheated. Okay, friends. This is screaming hot. So, I'm going to set that right there. Be very careful. <coughs> I don't want you to get burned. Okay, now we're just going to lift this up carefully. Put it right in our Dutch oven. No need to score this or anything. Just leave it there. Put the lid on it and put it back in the oven. Just like so. Okay. Now that's going to bake for 30 minutes. And when 30 minutes is up, you are going to, and I'll show you. Actually, I'll show you, but you're going to take the lid off and then bake it an additional 10 to 20 minutes so it browns up and the, the outside gets nice and crisp. Okay, friends, it has been 30 minutes. Now we're going to get this out of here. Whew. We're going to take the lid off and you can see the bread in there. It's beautiful. So we're going to put this back in the oven for about another 10 to 20 minutes so that it gets nice and golden brown. And you leave the lid off. Okay, friends, this is done. Let that heat out. <laughs> beautiful. Wait till you see that. Okay, this is screaming hot. And that's going to all fall apart. So, we're just going to dump this out right here. Set this over here so that can cool off. And there, you can see it, is our beautiful loaf of easy no need bread. And when this cools, 
We're going to cut into it. It's gorgeous. That's going to cool. It's going to say, oh, I'm going to let it cool about 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll be able to cut into it. So I'll show you how wonderful it turns out in the crumb on the inside. You're going to love this. Okay, friends, this is it. This is how wonderful this turns out. Oh, look at that. This is going to be delicious. It's still quite warm. But look at that. Beautiful crumb in there. Look at those holes. They're just gorgeous. That is a beautiful loaf of bread. So, because my grandmother always called this the heel of the bread. I don't know where she got the word, but she always called it the schetzel. That's my favorite part of the bread. So we're going to try it. And it's still warm. Mr. Wayna isn't here to test taste it for us. He's up painting today. I told you the other day he paints. And um, every other day I'm up there with him. But the other days, I'm doing my YouTube videos. All right, here we go. We'll give this a try. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. You can taste the ferment in there. Mmm. If you like, it's almost like sourdough. It's divine. Mmm. I hope you give it a try. Mm -mm -mm. Do my yummy dance. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, friends, that's it. We did quite a bit between yesterday and today. Um, we had a ball in the kitchen. I showed you an easy way to make bread. And remember, you can whip this together in the morning because it just has to sit for 12 to 18 hours. You can put it together in the morning. You know, right when you get up so that you give that extra couple hours before you go to work, by the time you get home, it's going to be ready to shape and bake. And you're going to have a beautiful loaf of bread for your dinner. So there you go, friends. We had fun in the kitchen again. Made a few things, showed you some no-need bread. Easy peasy. You all have a wonderful day. Give all these recipes a try. And I will see you in the next video. And again, thanks so much for watching. Look at who's here, friends. It gets to try a piece. And it's still warm. He must have smelled it. Did you smell it cooking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me butter you. Oh, friends. A nice piece. You're going to love this. Now, this is like fermented bread. You've had it before. Oh, try that and tell them what you think. Mmm. Is it good? Good. Like that? Yeah. Mr. Wayna could make, oh yeah, he's showing you. He could make a meal out of bread, couldn't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, just give him a loaf of bread and the butter. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful.